Hey crafty cuties, before we hop into today's video making dyed papers, I wanted to say a quick hello and just let you know that today for this, the inspiration, um, I had trouble trying to figure out what the heck I wanted to do with my spare time. My daughter naps in her own room now and so I have a few hours where I can craft or, you know, film videos and gosh, it was one of those days where I just kept starting a project, got two minutes into it, and I was like, no, don't wanna do this. I would get into another one and I'd be like, what's the purpose of this? This one's annoying. I just wasn't feeling it. And I know you guys feel that same way sometimes and we give up and we just put it to the side and that's totally fine. But sometimes I feel like we need to just reset and do a very, very simple mindless project, which is why I did this today. Now I've dyed papers a lot. So for me, it is a really mindless project. And if you are newer at dyeing papers, maybe it's not so, but I'm sure there is one or two uh, craft, I, cra craft activities where you find it super relaxing and just easy to do repetitive and those are the types of things that you want to do during this time when you are just feeling frustrated and not exactly motivated or inspired of what you're about to do so now let's get into the dyeing paper video right here all right so today we are going to make some dyed papers and i wanted this to be a little bit different than coffee dyed papers and i have all of these inks that i really really need to use up so i thought i would grab a few different colors um, that are kind of more fall so i'm going to do like some teals and blues and oranges and golds and then i have a variety of papers and mostly copy paper is what i like to use but i found these random leaves in my stash. I don't really know what they are, but I thought maybe we could put them down on the paper while they're drying to make some imprints, um, kind of like eco dyeing. So I don't know what these are from, but they um, will get used. So let's go ahead and just get started making some color. So I have water in here and I'm just gonna start by doing some browns because I do want this to be somewhat, I guess, grungy, um, and this doesn't spray. I don't care about the fact that these are spray inks. Well, that's very, but I do like to use inks like this because it can give a really cool um, illusion on your paper. So let's start with some browns and oranges. So this, of course, is somewhat like coffee dyed paper coloring but oops this one is super messy this is gold and so I really like how these golds look on paper and I like spraying it directly onto the water I've done hundreds of these videos um, just using the same technique here but I thought I would just bring you guys along so once you have some ink in here you can mix it up if you want a more uniform look but I'm just going to go ahead and keep it like this because I like to get like the swirls and different looks on my paper and sometimes you capture that and sometimes you don't just kind of like a uh, marbled paper but so if you can see like this one has you know kind of some different colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay these down. I didn't think this out right here. I have a pan next to me where I'm gonna place them so that I can um, put them in the oven. You can let yours dry however you want, but I like to put them in the oven because it's a little bit quicker. And I'm gonna place these on top of a paper towel for now just to get some of that moisture up. And if you can see, um, I like to fold mine in half. This just works best for me. And then I stack them right on top of each other. And I'll give you a look at that in just a minute. Let's do a few more. I do want the color to hopefully be somewhat darker. So let's go ahead and, oh geez, these sprays are so messy. I definitely won't be mad if we use them all up here. So let's see here. Just dip and turn. That one looks cool. And then sometimes actually what I like to do is just fold it right in the water because then you don't tear anything. And then I'm just gonna place that right on top of the last one. And again, I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. But if you've been around for a while, then you have definitely seen me make papers like this. Now, 
a year or two ago, I made some of these in more Halloween classic colors, um, like oranges and blacks, and I love how they turned out. Um, I used some like spiderweb doilies um, for different, um, like kind of as a stencil, but I almost made that this time. However, I realized that I am not planning to do a very classic October daily journal, so that wouldn't really benefit me. However, it is really fun to experiment with different colors, which is why I got the teals and um, purples and oranges, because I thought that those were pretty good basic um, colors for fall. So I think that will work for whatever I am planning to do. Now, um, if you're wondering what I am going to use these for, well, I am planning to make hopefully a few October daily journals that I sell if I can, if I can get on it fast enough. That's uh, definitely not a promise there, but I'm also going to be making one for myself. So that's what I'm using these for. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit more here. We'll work with this color for a bit. So I like to wait till it has some swirls. And then if you get it down just right, like I said, sometimes you can kind of pick that up. Not always because it does just kind of mix in with the water, but sometimes you do. So we'll do a little bit more of the browns and oranges. So I'm going to be back in a moment. So you get the idea of what I'm doing here, but let me use up this water and then we can move on to another color combination. And just to show you how I stack them, I leave a little bit of space, but you can see I just stack them right on top of one another. And um, I try not to stack them just directly on top of each other because I find that the papers stick together and then when you pull them apart, they usually rip. But this way, I hardly ever get any ripping. And so anyways, I have them on top of a paper towel just to get some of the extra moisture. And then I have a pan underneath with some foil on top. I don't usually do that, but these are pans that I cook on, so I wanted to protect them. So let's keep going. I'm almost done with this color now, but what I wanted to go ahead and try now is using one of these leaves and they are super thin, kind of, yeah, super, super thin, like tracing paper thin, but I'm going to try to put one on top like so. It's still wet, obviously. Well, yeah, it's still in the water. Duh. And I'm going to take my orange and just see if I can use this. It's probably better to do this outside of the water because you could actually use it like a stencil, but I don't know. I just thought, it, yeah, I should have done that, but that's okay. You know what? You're not going to know unless you give it a try. Okay, so let's try. Let's try that again. Okay, so I have the leaf here. You can somewhat see the outline. I'm going to take a purple, actually, a different color, and I'm just going to spray it right on top. And then it's a little heavy over here, but go like that. And then let's pull it up and see. Let's see if we can pull it up because there we go. But carefully. Okay, so it's probably a still a little too wet, but that gives a pretty cool look right there. So I'll probably do that to a few of these. Okay, I'm going to keep that base color, but I'm going to start by adding in some purple. And I'm just going to spray this right on top. And then flip it over. That's another way you can get some variation in the colors is by spraying directly onto the paper first and then dipping it into the water. So let's go ahead and do that again. But this time I'll use an orange right now. So I'm just going to put that right on top of the water. And this is getting everywhere. Let's do some orange and purple. There we go. Okay, I don't know. I thought I would give these a try. Um, I'm not exactly sure that I like that, but I like the color that we're getting. So we're just going to keep going on. And I'm going to keep the orange base color here because I do want these, like I said, to be... I don't know, have somewhat of a color rather than just like the bright colors. I do want them to have that. 
so we're just gonna keep going on and ooh, something I really do like to do too is to make sure to add this one which is the starburst sprays because it gives a really really pretty sheen to your paper and I know it looks like yellow right here but once it's dry you have a really pretty sheen and it's not like glitter but it definitely um, glimmers in the the light so I'm gonna keep doing that I'm even just trying to use up some of my really old sprays and just probably I could just dump it in honestly because I feel like the more colors that are in here the more grungy the papers look because sometimes even though this color might look somewhat dark when your paper dries it's it's not going to be nearly as dark as that color so keep that in mind and I have my first batch just about dry I do dry these in the oven at around no more than 300 Fahrenheit but you have to watch it super duper close so I think I'm going to start adding some blues and the greens and then we can probably call it a day. Probably have more than enough papers <laughs> to go ahead and dry. And remember if you want more, um, if you want the colors to be less muddy like this then obviously you're just going to want to change the water in between. But for me, this works out well because I think it works perfect for like fall color papers and honestly I would probably use these colors kind of any for any of my journals. So I'm going to finish drying all of these in the oven and you can see here how I'm just kind of incorporating the blue now and I'm just going to keep doing that same thing. I just kind of like to spray it on top. Um, let's try a little bit of this this is a really pretty starburst spray here and I think it's really dark. Some of these are darker than others so we'll finish this up and I'll show you what the finished papers look like once I um, have them all dried just because I think that is where you can really see what you come up with so we'll be back. All right, so the papers are done. I did make way more than I needed because I do plan to um, include some of the papers. I'm gonna cut them down and include them in my Patreon's next month's mail. But I thought I would just kind of show you how some of them turned out, super fun. And so um, if you are newer to dyeing papers, you might not have expected these to be so subtle, but you can see. Um, they end up pretty subtle. Now the lighting's not the best right here, but I love how these turned out. Now some of them are a little bit brighter than what I kind of thought or what I had in mind, but I still like them. And honestly, they ended up being just perfect, just what I was kind of looking for. And I feel like they ended up looking super like fall, like just the colors of all of the changing leaves and stuff. And even though the leaf idea didn't quite work out, I think these leaves are really, really cool. And if you guys have any ideas for how I can use them, see, I have a ton of them. Let me know down below. Um, but I just love how they all turned out. And so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, whether or not you are new to dyeing papers. Sometimes it just takes a slightly new twist on a project for you to get inspired and think that, hey, maybe I've, I've done that before, but maybe, maybe we'll change it up a bit and it'll be fun and just what I need for the day. I hope that's what it is for you guys anyways. But, oh, like the yellows and oranges are really honestly exactly what I was looking for. So I'm not gonna go through each of these because I think you kind of get the idea. They're all completely different and beautiful. And oh, I love all these random little areas like that. But I had a lot of fun making them. I love when one side of the paper is pretty dark and then the other is lighter because I feel like that is just perfect for a project where you're gonna use the paper like as a background. But. Here we go, guys. Well, I hope that you have a lovely, beautiful day, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.